so good morning guys so i am today we are going to see the topic about methods and constructors in java so before going to the topic let me see what we have discussed in previous class so in previous class we have discussed about the object oriented programming concepts of what is object what is class what is inheritance polymorphism encapsulation and data abstraction so by using an example we have seen what is the relationship between object and class by, by by an example dog creating a class for a dog and identifying the character, common characteristics of the dog and functions of the dog that means methods their character, uh, behaviors so and then we can for a different kind of breed we can create a, objects of that dog class so this is the example we seen in previous class and then inheritance the inheritance is nothing but inheriting the property of the existing class in a new class so there are different kind of inheritance single inheritance multi level inheritance hierarchical inheritance and then two more inheritance multiple and hybrid these are not supported in java but it is achieved by using a interface so we have seen an example for this inheritance and polymorphism so polymorphism is nothing but it is a many form it is a greek word it is mean many form and there are two type of polymorphism the compile time polymorphism that is method over overloading and runtime polymorphism method overriding so we have seen an example for these two things and encapsulation encapsulation is nothing but hiding the data wrapping the data into a single unit called as a class by making them as a private so data members if you make is make them as a private they cannot be accessed outside the class only by using setter and getter method we can access the data members and finally data abstraction so data abstraction is nothing but providing only the essential data to the user not all the data so this is uh, 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 this is also one, uh, sort of hiding the data so these are the various topics we seen in last class okay so today we are going to see what is methods and what is constructors in java so let us start with method so methods is a collection of statements that perform a some specific task and return the result to the caller so the function is nothing but a method is nothing but a collection of statements that perform a some specific task and return the result to the caller and method can perform some specific task without returning anything so when you call a function whether the function can return a value or it does not return a value so it happens both method allows us to re reuse the code without retyping the code so once you define a function you can make use of the function wherever you need so there is no need of rewriting the coding again and again so that is the advantage of methods in java every method must be a part of some class which is different from languages like c c++ and python when compared to c c++ python in java all the methods will be available inside a class it so it belongs to any one of the class so it will not be separate written separately outside the class so all the methods will be inside the class it belongs to the class but in c c++ we we can write the methods separately outside the class so method declaration so method declaration has six components so we can uh, for example i'll show you a, a pictorial definition so this is a method declaration i have declared a method called max which has components six components here i have shown five components modifier return type method name parameter list body of the method so it will be c one by one so first one is modifier so modifier is nothing but it defines a access type of the method so who is going to access how it can be accessed so by using the access specifier we will be defining the access type of the method so there are four type of access specifier public protected private and default so here the public is nothing but when you define the method as a public then it can uh, accessibility in all classes in your application it can be accessed in all the classes of that application whereas if it is protected the accessibility within that class only it is allowed the and it which it is defined and it is in its subclasses so when you, any subclasses are inheriting your class that subclasses can also access the protected data but when it is defined as a private the accessibility only within the class in which it is defined so outside the class you cannot access the data members only the 
say inside the class you can access that data members outside the class you cannot access it the last one is default access behavior so here that is you can declare or define without using any modify you didn't define any this three type of public protected private then that will be defaultly called as a default access specific that means accessibility within same class and package within which it class is defined so inside this class itself you can access the data members otherwise inside the package the other classes which are all belong to the same package can access this data members so these are the four types of access specifiers so for example in this method the public is the modifier which i am given for this max so all the data members can be accessed outside the all the classes of that application and second component is the return type the data type of the value returned by the method are valid if it does not return a value so if your function is returning any value the type of that value is called as a return type for example in this function the we are returning a value x and y which is of type integer so the data type return type is int here so i define my return type as a int because my function is returning a value x and y which is of type integer okay so if the function is not returning a value then we give as a void the void is nothing but does not having a return value so third component is method name so you have to give a name for your method so method name is nothing but it's a user defined name you can give to your function or method the rules for field names apply to the method names as well but the conversion is a little different and last uh, third fourth parameter is parameter list so inside the function we have parameters here i have two parameters int x and int y so these are called parameters and you have to specify the parameters and separate by the comma comma separate the rest of the input parameters are defined and next one is exception list even if your function is having any exception handling you can throw your exception in the method so the, for that we use a throw keyword so next one is method body the body of your for method is nothing but this is the component this is your body the open braces and closed braces this area is called as a body of the method so this is the method declaration which has various components modifier return type method name parameter list body of the method so method signature so method signature is nothing but just having the name of the function with their parameter list so here i have an example for the above program this is my method declaration for this my method signature is nothing but max of int x comma int y so this consists of method name and a parameter list and the return type and exception are not considered as a part of it there is no any return type or any exceptions so this is called as a method signature so how many parameters what type of parameters how many numbers so this defines only this and next one is calling a method so calling a method once you declare a function then we have to call the function wherever you need so for calling a function we just use the function name with parents uh, parenthesis and if you have a parameters you can pass the parameter values for the above example i have two arguments in text and in y so i have to pass the parameter value as 5 comma 6 so you can pass any value for the parameters so and method need to be called for using its functionality whenever you need the functionality of that methods you can call the function by using this syntax and there are there can be a three situation when a method is called when method is called there are three situation will be happen method returns to the code that invokes in when the three conditions are it completes all the statement in the method when the, all the statements in the methods are completed it returns the value to the called pointer if it reaches the return statement if final state returns keyword is reached the return after the return keyword is reached the function call will be invoked and then if an exception occurs a throw an exception will be occurred so this is called method calling so these are the three situations when method is called will happen once the function is completed all the statement has been executed or if the return statement is reached or if an exception occurs 
So this is an example for method. So in this program, I have created a class called addition, which contains a function method called add, which modifier is public, return type is int, and parameters are int a and b. So in this, I am just adding the two variables a and b and storing in my variable sum. And after adding the value, I am just returning the sum variable. So in my main class, this is my main class Sedu. In my main class, I am just creating an object for this addition class. Addition add is really new addition of. And then just using that object add, I am calling the function add. So in ts is equal to add dot add of one comma two. So this add function is called by passing the value one comma two, and this addition one plus two three will be assigned to the sum variable, and it will that's written keyword returns the sum value to the function called here. So if you have a value three will be assigned to the integer s. So when you print the output, the output will be the sum of two integer value is three. So this is how you create a method and then call the method. So next one is constructors. So constructors is a very important concept in Java. So constructors are used to initialize the object state. So if this is to initialize the object state means object variables, the variables which are all in the class, it will be initialized by the constructors. So like methods, a constructor also contains a collection of statements. So it is also similar to the methods that are executed at the time of object creation. So this constructor functions are automatically executed when you create an object for a class. So once you create an object, automatically the constructor function will be called and the initialization will be happened. So why we need a constructor? So we have an example, think a box. A program is going to write a, uh, for a box. Uh, when you have, write a program for a box, you have a parameters or characteristics or variables like length, breadth, and height. But when it is comes to the creation itself, when you create an object for that box class, you have to, the memory will be allocated for the box. So now when an object is created for the box class, the object will be as in, uh, will be allocated memory in the for the box. Then when a box when you call a box, there will be no value at all. So for this reason, we, have, we use a constructor to initialize the default value for the variables. So constructors are used to assign a value to the class variables at the time of object creation, either explicitly done by the programmer or by the Java itself. That is the default constructor. So we can explicitly give a value to the variables or we can defaultly give to the variables by using Java compiler. So once user is not created any constructor, Java will provide a default constructor. The Java compiler will provide a default constructor, which will allocate a, a default value to the variables. So when a constructor is called, and each time when you create an object using a new keyword, at least one constructor is invoked to assign an initial value to the data member of the same class. So once when you create an object for a class, automatically the constructor will be called. If implicitly the user has been created, the constructor will be called. Otherwise, the Java compiler will create, call the default constructor in the program. For example, here is a class called geek and a constructor geek. And when you create this object for this class, the automatically this constructor function will be called. So this is the function of constructor and rule for writing a constructor. So there are some certain rules for constructor. So the constructors of a class must have the same name as the class name in which it resides. So the name of the constructor must be as it is as same as the class name. Okay. So the class name and the constructor name will be same. The constructor in Java cannot be abstract, final, static, and synchronized. So the abstractor method cannot be abstract method, a final method, or static method, or synchronized. So this is uh, applicable to the ordinary methods, but in constructor method, it's not applicable. Access modifiers can be used in constructor declaration. 
consider a declaration to control its access. That is, which other classes can call the constructor. So, likewise, in this uh, normal methods, we provide access specific public private protector. You can also provide the access modifier in constructor also. Because when the inherited subclasses can also we can control whether they can create an object or we can call the constructor or not. So by using this access modifiers, we can give the control. So types of constructors. So there are two types of constructors in Java. So two types of constructors are non-argument constructors and parametric constructors. So the constructor without parameters and with parameters. So first one is non-argument constructor. A constructor that has no parameter is, is known as a default constructor. So that constructor which is has, which does not have parameter is also known as a default constructor. If you don't define a constructor in a class, then a compiler creates default constructor with no arguments. So already I said, if user is not giving any constructor in a Java program, the compiler will defaultly create a default constructor. And if we write a constructor with the argument or no argument, then the compiler does not create a default constructor. If user is giving a constructor, whether with the argument or no argument, the compiler will not create the default constructor. And the cons uh, default constructor provides the default value to the objects like zero and null. If the parameters or uh, variables are type of int, the zero will be given, otherwise the null value will be given. And next one is parametric constructor. A constructor that has parameters is known as a parametric constructor. If we want to initialize a field of the class with your own values, without defining a default value, if you want to assign a specific value of your own, you can give this parametric constructor. So here is an example for non-argument constructor. So here I have a class called Sedu and a constructor called Sedu. And in a main class, I am going to call the object, create an object for Sedu, S1. So when this object is created using a key, new keyword, the automatically this constructor Sedu will be called invoked. So now just so we are printing the s1.name, object s1.name. So s1.name will give the name of the Sedu class and then s1.num. So when, when you see, when you when this object is created, automatically this function will be called and this constructor called will be printed on the output. So you can see the function is called, you can verify it. And second one is parametric constructor. So parametric constructor is nothing but a constructor the same in a Sedu class. I'm having a constructor called Sedu, but I have a two parameters, a string name and int id. So in this constructor, we have a parameters. So while you're creating an object, you have to pass a parametric value. Whereas in previous example, when you create an object, you are referring to the class, but there is no any parameter values because we don't have any parameters. So this is non-argument constructor. But here we have a parameter. So we have to pass the parameter values. So when you create a object, say the S1 is a new say the of Adam comma one. So this Adam will be assigned to the name and one will be assigned to the ID of this class say the. So this is how the initial you know, values will be initialized to the variables. So does constructor return any value? So there is no any return value statement in constructor, but constructor returns current class instance. So which class instances we are, going, we are using, it will be written by the constructor. So there is no any return value by the constructor. And also we can overload the constructor, constructor overloading. So constructors can be overloaded. Like methods, we can overload the constructors for creating object in different ways. And compiler differentiate the constructors on the basis of number of parameters, type of the parameters, and the order of the parameter. Similarly to the method overloading, the functions of the same name, but different parameters. Different parameters, different parameter numbers, types of parameters. So similarly here, the constructor also differentiated by using their parameters. So, so this is 
this is what we uh, plan to discuss today so what is methods and constructors so related to this i have created an a uh, quiz and this is the link for that quiz and i request all to attend this quiz if any queries you can just mail me and my mail id is umesh r at sedu.ac.in thank you